All right. It's going. OK. So welcome, everybody, to our March Lunch and Learn. Um, my name is Sarah Fisher. I am a volunteer for the YMCA at the City Market. Uh, we provide these lunch and learns on a monthly basis. Uh, we've been doing essentially uh, January through October. And uh, so excited to have everybody uh, join us today. Um, we are going to be talking about uh, biking for transportation, uh, but I'll get to Pete here in a second. I uh, wanted to go over a few logistical things first. So if everybody could make sure that you're on mute and then you could uh, unmute if you have questions. Uh, I'm sure Pete is happy to have people ask questions throughout the presentation. Uh, so make sure that this is an engaging event. So uh, please do that. I uh, wanted to let everybody know that you're probably aware the YMCA at the city market is still closed, but uh, the Y at the Athenaeum and the Ursa Family YMCA are still open. Uh, so please get out and uh, go to the Ys. Uh, also, BGI at the city market is still open. Uh, they're open, I think it's still Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 4 by appointment only. Uh, but uh, definitely give them a call and uh, get your bikes tuned up and ready to go for uh, the summer. So I wanted to take a moment and tell you about the upcoming uh, Lunch and Learns we have. So April 8th, we're going to have a panel of folks from different bike groups. Uh, and we're going to just talk about, you know, what, what the different bike groups are doing, what the, how they've weathered the pandemic, you know, what they have in store for 2021, those kind of things just to make sure that you know, we're getting the word out about other uh, bike organizations around town. And then May 13th is family biking. So uh, Silva's gonna talk about uh, some of the great things that you know, to think about with family biking as we're getting into summer activities. And then June 10th, we have how to live a car light life. So, uh, that's going to be everything from talking about cargo bikes to you know, how to get rid of your car and just live on a bike. Uh, so there's going to be some great uh, discussion there. So I uh, want to introduce Pete Fritz. Uh, he is with the Indiana Department of Health, the uh, Di Division of Nutrition and Physical Activity. So awesome stuff. Um, he is the Healthy Communities Planner. And he's going to be talking about bike commuting uh, for transportation. So Pete, I will let you take it away. Sure, thank you. All right, well, thanks everybody. And feel free to eat your lunch. If we were in person, we'd actually be sharing a, a meal around a table and looking at a screen in person. Um, but maybe even moving forward, I'm hoping that we can use a Zoom technology and maybe do hybrid meetings uh, in the future. Um, I think we've had really good participation. Um, in, in using this format. So I think what I'd like to do uh, is just take a few minutes uh, and maybe do a little icebreaker routine. And I know people groan when they hear that, but, but I thought it might be fun. There's only, a, there's, there's like 12 of us on the, on the call. And maybe we can go around and just maybe say what, just in a couple seconds, what our goal is for using your bike for transportation in 2021. Looking forward to the riding season. I know many of you have already been riding and rode all through winter, um, but looking forward into this um, this summer, you know, how, how do you wanna use your bike for transportation? I'll start off. So I just, I bought a new bike trailer, um, a Burley trailer that, it, that, I, that I want to use my bike to go to the grocery. And that thing will hold 60 pounds of miscellaneous groceries. I can even put a case of wine in there, which I already have done and all home from the liquor store. So uh, my, my hope is to use my bike to run more errands uh, in that way. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go down the list here. So uh, Connie, do you have any goal like that? No, I, I don't at this okay. point. Um, I'm trying to figure out, well, uh, I hope to actually do some commuting to work um, that I wasn't able to do last year. So hopefully I'll be able good. to do that. Sounds good. And if you don't, if you don't want to say anything, you can just pass. Damon, how about you? <clears throat> well, 
already got rid of my car, so oh. there's not a whole lot more I can do. Um, I'm, I think that my stimulus check that's about to come is going to go toward an e-bike, and I'm going to oh. try that out. Good. Cool. All right. David Bergen. No specific plans, just here to listen to possibilities that are discussed. Sounds good. How about Doug? No real specific plans, but just um, using my bike a bit more, uh, trying to fit errands in with, with training rides. So, you know, on my way home at the end of my ride, stop at the store or stop at the hardware store or something like that and pick something up since I typically ride a touring bike and I have 10 years. Nice. Cool. All right. Gina. Yeah, I think I would I would like to ride to work a couple of days a week. I'm probably going to uh, eventually have a hybrid schedule where I'm home a mm -hmm. few days and, and go in a couple of days. Nice. Um, I will say that my um, experience trying to do that last year uh, or well, I guess it have been the year we've lost a year here. Um, very harrowing experiences. So I'm hoping to learn from this group um, maybe some alternative ways to get downtown and, and how to avoid sure. those run-ins with the buses and the cars. Sure. Yep. Good, good. We'll talk about that. Uh, John. So before we were working from home, I would commute by a bike downtown. So I guess just to continue doing that once our office opens back up in Salesforce Tower. Um, and also my fiance and I, you know, we go to the state parks a couple times a year for a couple weekend camping trips. So, you know, using our bikes there, you nice. know, for transportation, I think would be fun. So um, just do two of those, I think so. Cool, nice. So who is MSM Rehabilitation? That's how it came up. Um, don't know who MSM is. Oh, okay. Sophia. Hi, so we are a car-free family. We have two cargo e-bikes and since the um, pandemic, we used them for everything before everything shut down. And so we are looking for ways to continue doing transportation for our kids and um, to just be able to get her out in our community. Um, and we're looking for ideas of what you guys are doing to be able to get out when everything is closed. <laughs> cool. Good, good. We'll talk about that. Sarah. Yeah, so mine is going to be uh, getting back into uh, biking into work now that we've opened up uh, our offices. So trying to do that a few times a week. Cool. Trent. Hi. Um, <clears throat> yeah, once we, I've been going into work a few times a week or a couple times a week, it just depends, but trying to ride more to do that and then using the bike more for errands like that aren't just commuting to work, like going grocery shopping and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, maybe trying to find a way to get the dogs on the bike. We have a burly yeah. dog trailer, but nice. one of them hates it. So we got to kind of <laughs> figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They can freak out a little bit. Yeah. All right. Did I miss anyone? Maybe somebody came on the call as we were doing this. And then maybe I, if you want to uh, respond, I'll go ahead. Oh, I think you're muted. Got it. Sorry. That's okay. I think I got the gist from everyone's responses, but I um, I'm just looking to increase ways to commute to work because I've done that a few times, and the Good. obviously the um, the traffic can be a little harrowing at certain times of the day. And yep. um, yeah, I just want to learn from you guys and see what you guys are currently doing. Cool. All right. Did I miss anybody? Hey, last call. All right, well, I've got a little presentation, um, maybe about 15 minute um, slideshow, and then we can talk about some of the issues that you all mentioned uh, to, to round out the hour and discuss ways to, to maybe do some problem solving around this. So I am going to share my screen. Um, and now, can you all see this? 
the 10 myths of using your bike for every day. And yep. Okay. Hot sticker pierogi kid. Yes. Okay, so you got it. Okay, so this is a little dated now, but many of you might have watched this show. I think it's still in syndication. They, I think I just saw that they, they made almost like 300 episodes of this Mythbusters, but it's a nice framework to go through this idea of using your bike for transportation because there are a lot of myths that people talk about wanting to ride their bike more for bike commuting or everyday transportation, but they seem to always be a reason not to. And it's one of those things. So um, I'm going to address some of these ideas. And this is the cast. If the, the original cast has changed throughout the years. Um, but the um, one myth is that I'm not fit enough. A lot of people think, well, I just don't have the fitness to do this. And I don't feel comfortable kind of commuting to where I want to go, either to work or to the grocery or to other destinations. Um, but one way to realize is that you don't have to make the whole trip um, on your bike. You can start out with a half a trip. Um, and I remember when I first started uh, commuting from downtown, I live on the northeast side of Indy. But it's, a, it's a pretty good commute. I used, to, uh, I used to drive to Broad Ripple and I'd park in the McDonald's parking lot right by the Monon. And I'd take my bike off my car and I'd, it's six miles from there. So it's a pretty reasonable commute. Um, and I started doing those half trips and then I lengthened them eventually to that I could do the whole trip. So um, that's one way to uh, kind of work into using your bike more for everyday transportation. Also, you can do a test ride on a route on a weekend just to see, you know, how you feel, how, how your fitness level is. And, um, and on the weekend, there's not as much traffic and you can kind of test out routes and maybe get a, get a feel for for um for your fitness level and also you don't have to ride at a fast pace this kind of riding is not racing for sure although i've seen people commuting that feel like it's a race um, but you can ride at an easy pace most bike commuters um also lose 10 pounds on their first six months of bike commuting i know when i first started i noticed uh, an increase in fitness right away uh, and it's it's amazing how how fast you can start to um, if you if you kind of do this on a consistent basis of using your bike for transportation, you can really feel a benefit in fitness. So next, okay, number two, it takes too long. A lot of people think, well, this using your bike for these everyday kind of things, it just takes too long, too much out of my day. Well. Um, the issue with, with bike commuting is a lot of people start out, you know, usually around 10 miles an hour. That's, you know, compared to a lot of group rides I've been on, that's relatively slow, but you become faster through the year. And I've noticed this, especially if I haven't ridden in the winter time in the past, I have ridden through winter this year, obviously I haven't been, so I've been working from home. But the idea is, is that as your fitness level increases, you, you ride faster and you can actually get to your destinations faster. And also a lot of times a bike trip can be faster or equal to a driving trip. And um, I've noticed this uh, since when I work downtown, I, I have to park remotely in a parking lot. By the time I work my way through traffic, park my car, walk to my front door, the door to door time is almost about the same as riding my bike. Um, and so a bike trip can many times be faster or equal to driving, especially short trips. It's just about the same. And then trading a bike commute for time in the gym is a net saving. So if you're, if you're using your bike commuting or your kind of these, these everyday uh, trips to everyday destinations as part of your fitness regime, it can take the place of going to a gym and doing a cardio workout in a gym. And if you trade that time, that's really a net savings um, in, in time. So um, time is not necessarily an issue when you frame it that way. Next, it's too far. Some people think, well, I live too far away to, to the, any of these destinations. And I, I know that's a challenge, especially in suburban locations. But we, are, we have an increasingly uh, better transit and bus system in Indianapolis with the red line and with some of the... Um, uh, the bus is running um, more frequently now. You can try using the bus for half of your bike trip. And I know I've been doing that more and more. I live on the northeast side right off the Castleton route. 
and I can just put my bike on the on the front of the bus on the bike rack, and um, I can on my on my trip into work when it's cold in the morning, I can just get on the bus. Um, and then when it warms up in the afternoon, at the end of the day, I ride home. And especially if there's a south wind, it makes it a lot easier too when I have that wind blowing me home. Um, so it's it's nice to use a bus. I do that more increasingly now. Um, and you can also use your car the same way. You can drive uh, with your bike um, halfway, park and ride the rest. Like I said, and park in Broad Ripple, park wherever you want and just you know it, make it a half of a commute. Um, and then another way you can do it is you could take your, just drive to work with your bike on your car and park your bike overnight. If you have a safe place to park your car overnight, um, and then you could ride your bike home, ride back the next day and drive home. And you can kind of you can combine drive trips and bike trips in a lot of ways. And I've done that through the years in many different uh, forms of using my bike and my car together. A lot of people are concerned about bike parking, and this is a real a real concern. And I know Trent has has uh, has helped to map out bike parking uh, around, and maybe we can talk about that in the question and answer. But look around for a storage area in your building or office where you're going to park your bike. And I know through the years, I've had workplaces that have had you know, parked my bike in a coat closet. Um, right now, I park it in an abandoned electrical room. It works great for bikes. Um, and, and many times in an office, you can find a spot to stash your bike. Or, um, and, and, and that works really well. And, it, it, um, and most, most uh, workplaces will be accommodating for that because they kind of like to have their employees being fit and riding to work. And, and ask your employer to, to provide bike parking. And many times, all you have to do is ask and they'll do it. Or at least ask to provide outside bike parking where you can lock a bike up. I know where I work now, I've got a bike closet off an alley. We can get about eight bikes in there and it's full in the summertime to overflowing. It's difficult to get your bike in and out of there, but we also have bike racks uh, in the front near our entrance and those are full. So we, we usually accommodate about 12 bikes uh, every day. Uh, and that's probably about 2% of, of the people in our building. It's not a lot, but still, that's a pretty good percentage and it seems to be increasing and there's a demand for bike parking. Now, some people say, well, I have a beat up bike. I really don't have a bike that's good for bike commuting, but what's interesting is counterintuitive. Sometimes these, these beat up bikes make the best bikes for transportation. These aren't necessarily uh, a, a racing bike, although a carbon frame bike could, is fine for bike commuting or running errands. Sometimes you can't carry as much weight on a carbon uh, fiber frame, but it all just depends on the design of the bike. But regardless, um, the a, a steel bike, it makes a great commuting bike. And many of those you can find used or a, have an older bike and or buy new steel bikes. I think all my bikes are steel frame now. I have one aluminum frame, but find be sure to find a reputable bike shop and tune up your bike and make sure it fits you. Um, bike fit is really important in using the bike for transportation because the one thing, if you're if you don't feel comfortable on the bike, chances are you're not going to reach for it to replace a trip in your car. And if you can get your bike dialed in so it's comfortable, you've got a really good saddle, you've got the right saddle height, the right handlebar height, um, the chances are you'll 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 reach for your bike instead of your car to go for a trip. And make sure it's reliable and in good working order before you ride. Um, uh, every every time I know I ride, I, I I do a quick air pressure check. Sometimes I'll I'll do this uh, bike bump where I'll just pick it up and 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 drop it, you know, a little bit on to make sure nothing's rattling. And I, it's amazing how many times I've found something loose just by doing that. Um, making sure your brakes are in good working order uh, before you ride. And I know that I'm I'm guilty of this too, where I've changed a flat after I've ridden. And I I forgot to uh, chain to to close my brake caliper, and that's a strange feeling when you go to brake and there's nothing there. So um, just kind of making sure that everything's okay before you take off and make that a routine. I think that's really important. And some people there's a myth like oh I can't do this because there's no showers. I get sweaty when I ride to a place. Um, but the truth is that many commuters that I know 
don't necessarily shower at work or, or they, and you can ride at an easy pace and you can stay cool and dry. And this is especially now with people using e-bikes. That's the beauty of an e-bike is that you can ride that at a level where you don't necessarily um, are overly exerting yourself. Um, you're still getting a good workout, um, but you can arrive at your destination without being really sweaty. But if you do, there's lots of ways to deal with this and using baby wipes and things like that uh, afterwards, just find a restroom and kind of clean up. It really works. And I've done this for years and I'm sure many of you have, have it as well. And then you have like the bike hub at YMCA city market. They offer showers. Uh, you can get a shower only package, a commuter package. Um, and there are other locations downtown that offer that as well. I know I'm lucky enough that we have a shower in our basement um, in the men's restroom it's a single stall and sometimes it's kind of lined up for people to use that in the summer. Um, but it works. It's not the most glorious shower I've ever had, but you know, it, it kind of works when I need it. Um, and also just um, being able to, uh, to have access to that is really important. And sometimes some, some offices, you might not even know there's a shower available until you ask. Um, also number seven, I have to dress up. I mean, this isn't, we have in our casual kind of workplaces nowadays, it's not so much an issue, but a lot of us still have to wear casual clothes. And sometimes I want to wear shorts when I ride in in the summer. Um, so one way to do that is keep multiple sets of clothing at work and rotate them on the days you drive, kind of bring them back and forth. I know a lot of people do that. But also some people have work clothes. If you, if you need to wear something fancy is have, have a laundromat nearby or a dry cleaner and keep the, that kind of clothes, clothing at a dry cleaner and have them kind of cleaned there and delivered to your workplace. But what I do is I really pack clothes with me when I commute. Um, I have a basket on the front of my bike now and I have a large bag on the back and I use panniers occasionally. I pack my clothes with me when I, when I, ride. If it's cool enough, I'll just ride in my work clothes. I'm doing that more and more, especially wearing kind of stretchy, you know, casual clothes. Um, but packing them up is not that big a deal, especially if you roll them and just bring them with you and change at your destination. I can't think of how many restrooms I've changed in from Starbucks to McDonald's to actually fancy restaurants um, to, um, my kids high school, when I go and watch them, you know, watch my kid play soccer, which kind of freaked her out a little bit, but <laughs> there, you can always find a place to change if you need to. Um, and when you kind of, uh, kind of integrate that into your life of using your bike for transportation. Some people say the weather is a, is a really big kind of uh, issue. If it's raining or snowing, I just can't, I can't use my bike like I do my car. But you can start to do that and start to mitigate weather uh, on your bike. One is to put a set of full fenders on your bike. It's amazing what fenders will do in keeping you dry. Even in a full rain, you can keep your feet pretty dry with a set of a full set of fenders and having rain gear. And I've gotten to the point now that I've assembled through the years um, a rain kit as well as my fenders that I can stay pretty dry uh, when I ride. So that, that works pretty well for me. Um, and if you're at your if if you're at your destination and bad weather comes in, maybe take transit home. I've done that also, where I've left my bike at work and I just take the bus home if, if the weather changes, or just get a ride share um, and 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 come back and get your bike later. There's a lot of especially with ride share now. Um, there's a lot of ways you can mitigate the um, changes in weather, um, and or just take transit for the day give up on a ride and just go from there. Um, yeah, that can make a, a change. Um, and sometimes you just have to say, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ride. I'm either going to drive or take transit. And if you, it, hey Pete, real quick go on ahead. that. So if you sign up for a commuter connect that can, uh, you can do that in the rain, right? Yes. Well, that's a good question. Commuter connect. Okay. No, I don't think rain, so. <laughs> rain, weather does not count as an emergency ride. If you sign up for Commuter Connect, you can get an emergency ride home. So like there's a fire at your house, somebody gets in an accident, but weather doesn't count. Okay. Or if you have but a mechanical they are, issue. They are working, yeah, they are working on being able to provide you with like um, a ride share should your bike break down on the way home that you can call and have somebody pick you up and take you the rest of the way home. So there is a benefit to being a part of Commuter Connect if you're a bike commuter. 
but weather isn't one of them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Cause that, that whole commuter connect connection is really important through a lot of this. Um, so safety, some people, some people don't want to ride cause they think it is not safe. Um, and I apologize for the bike with a chainsaw on it. I just saw that and couldn't resist bringing it in. It's kind of like the, the bike for the zombie apocalypse, but the, um, but obeying traffic sign, I think it's, it's important to ride safe, um, to be safe in a lot of, a lot of ways. Obeying as a, as a bicyclist, obeying all the rules of the road, traffic signs, riding on the right, signal turns, stop at lights, learning how to mix with traffic is probably your, your one way you can make your riding safe. And it's really important to do that as a bicyclist when you're dry, riding for transportation, um, as well as wearing bright clothing, if possible. Now I know that not everyone can, can wear bright clothing. And I, I, I take a little bit of issue with saying that, that bicyclists and, and pedestrians should, should dress differently. Um, but bright clothing does make a difference. I've noticed that when I wear my bright jacket, I can tell that people see me a little more, either when I'm walking or biking. Um, and so, so I, I think it helps, and I, and I try to do that as much as I can, especially reflective pieces on my bike and reflective bits you know, on my, on my jacket and on my helmet and things like that. And I think... Uh, also, lights having lights front and back. Um, not only is that state law that you need to have front and rear lights, that, or a, a front light and a and a rear reflector, but the idea of of using those um, some I think all the time is a good idea. I have running lights that I use now during the day, and they're very visible during the day as well. And it just gives me some peace of mind. Um, and I've had people comment that they can see my lights during the day and it kind of surprises them. Um, but, but I think more and more people are starting to use lights all the time. It doesn't necessarily need, mean that you have to, but certainly at night, um, it's really a necessity. And then plan a safe route. And this is part of being safe. Um, use, the, use the tools you have. And increasingly, we've got really good ones. Um, one is Ride Spot. And I know that Connie can talk about this maybe uh, in the question and answer. It's a, it is a, um, it's a website where people post uh, routes and a lot of, they post commuter routes. Some people post loop routes for recreational riding, but even those are useful um, if you're going to points along those routes. It's becoming increasingly a, a really good source to find um, crowdsourced bike routes. Uh, Google Maps is increasingly good. I think all of the bikeways in Indianapolis are now posted on Google Maps. And you can use those, and they're easily to, easy to find by the, the green lines. Both bike lanes and uh, separated uh, bikeways are all on Google Maps now that I'm aware of. And then the Indy Ride Guide um, that Bicycle Indianapolis uh, publishes is a bike suitability map. It's really good, and I, I still use that. If I'm going to a part of the town that I'm not familiar with, I'll look it up on the Ride Guide. I have a hard copy of that, but you can also find a PDF of that online. Um, and it shows uh, low volume uh, roadways that are more suitable for bike riding, uh, as well as all the, uh, all the designated bikeways in town. It's a really good uh, resource to use. And I, I, I typically carry one of those with me and I've given to, those to people on the trail where people have asked me directions, I've given them a copy of the ride guide um, so they can use it to find their way and where they're going. And then last one, I have to run errands. So a lot of people think, well, running errands is really hard on a bike. It's, I've got to use my car to do that because I can't carry stuff. And I had to include this, this bike move, which is really a thing in Portland that um, people get together and move whole houses on their bikes. But the idea is, is make your bike usable for hauling things um, at, a, at a rack, front and rear, or just rear, or one, one or the other, or both. Add a basket. I, I have I have a front basket on my bike now, and that is the most useful thing I think I've ever put on my bike. Um, I have a net that I put over it, and I just can carry all kinds of things. I like that the weight is centered on my front wheel. Um, it makes my bike uh, stable, and the kind of bike that I ride with my basket, it's kind of designed for some weight on that front on that um, front axle. So it's it really. Um, 
it makes for a nice stable ride and it's an easy way to, to carry things and I can get access to things like gloves, jacket, um, lock, all those kind of things. Or, and even at a trailer, I know a couple of us are using trailers. Um, I think the bike trailer is a great thing and to have access to one, if you have a place to store it, uh, you can really add the capacity to carry things up to a, over a hundred pounds and haul things around. Make sure you have a good lock uh, if you're running errands. And a lot of people think a cable lock is a good lock, but from my experience, um, cable locks are so easy to cut. They're okay if you're just gonna dash in and maybe get a coffee or something like that in a place that's very visible. But if you're gonna be leaving your bike for any long length of time, um, I would get a good U-lock uh, that is more difficult and takes more time to break than a cable lock. Um, because I have, I've heard too many stories from my friends that have locked their bikes up with cable locks uh, at work, and um, and they have, their their bikes have been stolen uh, with the cable locks. I, I think a cable lock is good also in in tandem with a U lock to to hold a hold a front wheel on. If you have quick release um, uh, hubs, you can easily put a cable around your front wheel, and it stops someone from just quickly taking it but have that in addition to a U-lock adds security to your bike. Plan trips in advance and allow time for locking. I know that sometimes I get in the habit of just thinking I'm driving, I'm just gonna ride up to the front door and, or like, a, like I do a parking space and walk in, but I forget it takes, it takes another few minutes to kind of get my gear, lock my bike up and that's okay, um, but just allow time to do that when you run errands. And many employers are now providing loaner bikes uh, like bike share for their employees, um, or ask your employer to think about that. Um, bikes are relatively inexpensive when you think about um, um, a, a company that has, you know, a, a few employees. And if you if those employees can use that bike to go to a meeting, you know, that's probably a, a reasonable expense for an employer to to use. And it it, it actually makes them look good that they're kind of starting to uh, help their employees get around. Um, and where they need to go in a healthy manner. So to sum it up, and then we'll go into some discussion. So this is just some reasons why, why I ride my bike for transportation. Um, one is it saves money. Um, that's not my primary goal, but when I, and I, I, I typically log my miles and, and if I get, you know, usually it's easy to start racking up miles this way. And if I can get a thousand to 2000 miles a year, and I trade those out for a car ride, which they are, um, I can put a cost to that because I know how much it costs to, for every mile that I ride my, drive my car. And it's, I can save up to about $1,000 a year by trading out car trips for bike trips. And I, I keep telling my wife, I'm gonna, well, I could buy a new bike every year with that. And that doesn't really go and work that well, but, but I certainly can, can use that money to maintain the bike I have and to get other good bike stuff. Um, also, I can get physical activity out of it. It saves me workout time to go to a gym and, save, and saves me, I don't have a gym membership. A lot of people do that ride bikes, but I don't. It saves me um, that money that I would pay in a gym. And also for the work I do in terms of physical activity promotion, I, it helps me to be a good example to others and if you if you love bicycling, especially if you're in bike advocacy, it's a it's a it's a way to be a good example to others. Plus, it helps the environment. You can also there are there are widgets online where you can figure out for every bike mile you ride how much carbon you're saving when you trade a bike trip. And it's amazing. I for for that 2000 miles, it's about a pound a mile when you trade that out for how how much carbon it takes to drive a car a mile. Um, and that's wrapped up in the manufacturing, gas, everything else. Um, so you're saving a significant amount of carbon going out into the atmosphere. And it can just be fun. And it doesn't have to be overly analytical. Biking's fun. That's why I do it. Um, I have bike storage. I have a supportive boss. Uh, I ride with people, which is fun. It makes it safer, but it's also a social activity. Uh, through the years, I have met lots of really interesting and fun people doing this kind of thing. Um, I'm lucky to have showers and also I'm lucky to have bikeways and safe routes. From where I live in suburban Northwest Indy, I can actually, in about a quarter mile, I can be on a bike lane to a protected bike lane to um, a trail 
all the way to the front door of my building downtown. And uh, used to not be that way 20 years ago when I first started doing this, but um, it's it has now, and I, I feel very lucky to be able to, to have those bikeways and safe routes. So that's my contact information. Um, I'm glad to talk more about this with people. It's part of my job, but also um, if you want to uh, reach out and have any other questions, we can do that. So I'm going to escape here and go back to a screen. And um, maybe we can just kind of facilitate a little bit of a, um, a discussion about maybe some questions that you might have about using your bike for transportation. And I know some of you had expressed maybe some might want to learn a few things or have a few questions for the group. Uh, we have some pretty long time commuters on, in this call and, and I know that they could maybe answer some questions. Hey, so it's Sarah. Uh, so I, I'm kind of lucky in the fact that uh, my bike commute downtown, I live on Capitol and I work on Capitol. So I have a bike lane all the way down to my office. I have to do a jog now uh, to get yeah. on to Illinois um, because of the red line, but uh, it's been really nice. And you know, I, I think the key thing for you know riding is making sure you see people and they see you, making sure you have that you know confirmation of eye contact with yeah. people, right? N not just, oh, I, they should be able to see me, but get some verbal cue or you know some, some cue from them that they see you, um, and then you know being visible as far as lights and clothing. I think that's huge. Um, but uh, you know fo following the traffic rules. Uh, you know you see so many bikers out there that you know just breeze through things and stuff like that. That's the biggest yep. complaint that any that any driver has about bikers is. Oh, well, they think they own the world. And uh, so I, I think that's a huge one is, you know, leading by example and following the traffic rules as you're uh, going through your rides. Uh -huh. yep. I think I'll, I'll second that, but also there are you know, classes that you can take. Bike Indianapolis does have those. Um, there's Savvy Cycling, there's uh, Smart Cycling 101 that really dive into you know skills that you can utilize um i know that pete and i and forget who else on this call are league cycling instructors so there are skills that you can but there's there's also um a bicycle friendly driver program for drivers um, that trying to get a little bit more traction on um so that drivers can understand what their responsibilities are. Um, mm -hmm. I also live on the Northeast side and have you know, some, some really nice bicycle infrastructure, but not everyone has that. And so trying to find, you know, having the skills uh, to navigate the traffic that you do encounter and also um, being able to find routes that may not be what you would be driving, but would be a um, parallel to the major roads. There's usually some quieter roads that you can, can take, maybe a block or two out of your way. Um, before the Monon and before, well, even after the Monon, I used to love going down Pennsylvania Street instead um, because it was wide and there was very little traffic. Um, and even though I can take a trail pretty much from a mile from where I live to all the way to downtown, I usually hop off of the trail and go on Alabama Street just because I like seeing the architecture there and it's a very low traffic road. Um, and I can actually go faster on that than I can um, encountering on the Monon when you have to stop at every intersection. So um, it's a little easier when you have grids, like in the center township. Um, in the outlying townships, it's a little harder to find, but there are um, many more bike infrastructure and trails that just got even done in this past year. And there's um, 
I put in the chat the link to the indiebikehub.org that has links to the ride spot rides um, or ride spot routes of the different bike commuting trains that we, when we were doing bike and breakfast and had bike trains. Um, so all of those routes are there for people to use. The other thing is if you can find a biking buddy to ride with, it's always, it's more fun. Um, and it's, and it's, you're more visible when you're in a group than if you're just by yourself. Um, and it also, it's, it's just might give you some more ideas of where to ride um, from where you live and where you want to go. So I had a question for um, Sarah, since she said it sounds like you use the Capitol and the Illinois bike lanes. Um, I found, I mean, I've been riding for years on the road and I found Capitol in the morning um, terrifying with so many close calls with bicycles, even though I'm wearing my bright cycling gear, I have my flashy blink light, I'm taking the lane, but um, if they wanna take a right to go get on the interstate at 30th, I, I mean, they'll just cut me off, um, slam, you know, to the point I have to slam my brakes on from hitting cars. Um, I've had um, a very confrontational run-in with a city bus going north on Illinois, north of 16th Street. Um, like like on purpose trying to run me off the road so i just i i really lost my stomach for it after a couple of days of this yeah the, going north on illinois i know the best you're talking about because i almost saw them take out a biker in front of me and it wasn't a uh, oops i didn't see that person and uh i, I even I confronted the driver and she refused to open her door but i know when when she let people off um, in front of, you know, and I, and took off like the, pre the people getting off go, did you see her try to hit you? And I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> can I, can yes, I at, at, at 30th street. Yeah. That, that is definitely a harrowing thing going South as well. Uh, and yeah, I, I haven't, I've had a few close calls there, but nothing major yet. Knock on wood. Uh, but can yeah, I, a I, couple I things there. Yeah. Um, first of all, if you ever have a run in with a bus like that, call Indigo. You just oh, have I did. To tell them what yeah. bus route and what time it was because I they had do the bus number, the exact time, the description Wonderful. of the lady because she wouldn't open her door and talk to me at the net because I caught up with her. I kept it catching was, up yeah, with her. Right. Because um, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I teach the bicycle friendly driver class and I tell people of, of all the, the drivers who are most disgruntled by bike riders, it's, it's city bus drivers because the bike and the bus end up moving down the road at the same pace. So that bus driver keeps going, I got around you and now I got to get around you again. And now I got to get around you again. So I, I try not to, to give them too much grief because most bus drivers are really uh, kind to bike riders, even though we're kind of a big pain for them because they have to keep navigating us. Um, but on the other, one of the things that we teach in our uh, road safety classes is don't let paint think for you. On Capitol, that bike lane on Capitol is one of the earlier bike lanes and it's not put in the way it would be put in if it were done today. And speaking of like that intersection at 30th Street, what you should do when you approach that intersection is get out of the bike lane and take the drive lane. So that leaves the bike lane available for a right turning car to go over to your right and make the turn. And then that discourages some of that right hook stuff that you're experiencing. Just because the bike lane's there doesn't mean you have to be in it. So, How do you get into the drive lane at 7.30 in the morning though? Like it's just what? nonstop cars. I mean, they, they ne there's never a break. Well, it, it, what I do is I, I turn and look over my shoulder and put my hand out to the oncoming traffic. Somebody in that line will let you out. And typically you're coming out there because there's a light that you're going to have to stop at. So you're not going to be in their way, but then you're not in the way of somebody who's in a hurry to make that right turn. That's going to do something stupid. That's true. Super helpful. Thank you.
Thanks, so Gina. Where are you starting from? So I start um, near 106 in the Monon. Oh, okay. um, so I was actually taking the Monon down to um, 52nd, whatever, one of those roads um, and take it over to Capitol because I was working at 16th and Capitol and taking them. I, I don't know of a safe east west road from the Monon <laughs> to 16th Street. Um, to the to you know 16th and Senate or 16th and Capitol. Mm, actually, there is. <laughs> the city has been trying to develop this network of neighborways, and one of the first ones they've actually mapped out would fit your need. Uh, if you come down the Monon to 19th Street, take 19th Street West. They they've put in a sort of arch path through. King Park, and then it it goes down along the, the west side of King Park to 17th Street, and 17th Street parallel 16th Street all the way over with a little zigzag, and you can get to, how far have I gone? Well, you can get to uh, Talbot, then go to 18th and go all the way over to Capitol on that. It's a little, little zigzaggy. And we're, we're trying to get the city to actually put up some signs so you know where you're going. Uh, the, other, I, the other thing you can do is, is once, if you're going down the Monon, is to get off at Fall Creek Trail and head east because it goes, or head west, it goes all the way now to Riverside Park. But you could get true. to, you could go to Senate all the way on Fall Creek Trail and then go down Senate if you wanted to do That's that. True. That's very true, yeah. That Damon, that route that you were describing for the neighbor way, uh -huh. if you go to Google Maps. I think there's a dashed or a dotted green line that kind of shows that route as like a bicycle friendly street. Okay. Oh, great. So it kind of point paints it a little bit on the map. So Connie, you were saying if you take the Monon to the Fall Creek Trail, that yeah. takes mm -hmm. that takes uh -huh. you how far? Um, it goes all the way to Riverside Park now and, oh, wow. okay. and goes and after next year we'll hook into the the canal towpath but it you could get off of it at at I Senate yeah, and I, just I, go straight yeah down. I will say I can't stand riding the Monon south of you know, <laughs> you have to stop at every intersection stop yeah. stop stop and yeah, yeah and I mean that's them why I lost Fall Creek Trail, all 13 miles of it, there's two road crossings where you actually, and they have lights. And, and so nice. you under all the other roads and, and that's why it's a lot quicker. And so um, now I've of course changed uh, positions where I'm gonna be at Martin Luther King and 11th Street, 12th Street. Um, <laughs> I know, mm. I kind of thought about taking uh, the Monon to Broderpool and getting on the to canal towpath um, and then that can dump you out there by, um, was that Riverside Golf Course? And uh, I could, <clears throat> I could make my way south of 30th uh, along, you know, Waterworks Road over to Indiana Avenue. But once I get to Indiana and 10th Street there, unless there's another actually, way. There, there, there is a way. Uh, I just did a route for the NCAA, they're, they're putting a, a bike route up that visits a lot of the basketball historical sites and the Attics uh, gym yes. is on that route. So yes. I, can, I can give you a way to get there. Just send me an email. Oh, that would be great. I'll, um, I'm gonna put it in the chat, all right? All right. Thank you, so helpful. Anyone else have any questions or concerns while they're out riding? If, if there's no questions, do you want me to mention the bike parking on Google Maps? Um, yeah. So yeah, if you can, if you just search on the Google Maps app or web or page, then type in bike racks or bike rack. Um, and then there, there should be mapped out like all of, almost all of the bike racks in Marion County. Um, you might have to zoom in 
to like a block away from where you want to go and click the search this area button and it'll populate all of them there. Um, yeah, and there used to be pictures, but they Google Maps took the pictures off, so you can't really see what it looks like now, but it still shows where they're located. At least they didn't erase all of your hard work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to like sneak the pictures back on under a different account, but I haven't gotten to Are it. Are these like bike lockers or no, just like on like on street like bike racks. Okay. okay. Yep. Hey, I I've, I've got it. If you want me to share the screen real quick? Sure. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Hold on. Share. Share screen. Can you see it? Yep. Oh, that's a that's a different one from the one I made. Oh, oh that's different than what you I made? Think, I don't know if the city made that one a while back or not. Oh. Um, okay. Hmm. But since you're sharing your screen, do you want to like go to google map and search for it like around yeah. downtown let's do google maps uh indianapolis just do google maps and have it come up with where you are okay google maps. yeah there we go now just put bike parking in the search search bike parking bike rack might show more now because it stopped adding oh all yeah because they changed you yeah Grants. Is that doing it? No. Oh, that's looking for a that's looking for a business. No, that, mm. that's, yeah, that's just showing it. Right. You have to zoom in and it'll show more around the area. Oh, okay. Hmm. Does it have that? Click on that search this area in the on the map. Oh, I see. There's there's one. Oh, that's a bike. Uh, you're not. Yeah, you, you get do bike rack singular. Bike rack. Yeah, there now they show up. And that's that would be okay. Bike parking. Bike parking. Yeah, there used to be pictures of the actual rack in there, but Google didn't like the way Trent did it. Oh, uh, okay. But at least it's showing street view, right? Of each. Uh, okay. Yeah. But they should be pinpointed to pretty much exactly where it's at on the map. There's, that's a good one. Okay, cool. So I have one more question before I have to drop off. Um, in the past, when I've uh, commuted, I have a, um, you know, a backpack meant for riding with a bike. It ties around your waist, all that. But um, as now, I'm going to have to start like taking a laptop and notebooks and things in addition to my clothes and my lunch. Um, I was thinking about adding uh, panniers or, or something and then and fenders as, as well. Um, is there any recommendations for doing that or where to get or are they all created equal? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll chime in, um, depending on, on what is available. Uh, there are specific um, panniers that are designed to carry laptops. They have a padded laptop insert. Um, when I commute by bike um, to work, I have my laptop and all of my work stuff on one side and I have all my clothes and lunch and everything on my other. And I have two really huge um, panniers. So um, so anyway, that's, uh, you wanna have something that's easy to get on and off your bike that carries all the stuff that you need and that's waterproof or, and or has waterproof covers, uh, you know, just to make sure that you've got that. The, the laptop um, thing is, it's helpful because it pads it a little bit more and usually um, takes out some of the vibrations from the roadway as well, depending on how it is. So you take your panniers inside to work with you? Yeah. Yeah, I have a, well, I used to have a bike locker at work. Um, I hopefully it, once I start biking to work again, I'll, I'll put the other one out. Um, 
And so I put my bike in there and then I carry my, my panniers. Um, but I don't have to carry my helmet or anything like that. I can just take the panniers. But, but there are some panniers that have that um, transform into like a backpack. And so you can just put it on your back, um, which if I only needed one pannier, that's what I would do. Yeah. But I usually need two by the time I have all my clothes and shoes and lunch and all of that, that fills one of them. Yeah, I, I use a brand, it's made by Arkell, and I know the BGI carries them, and it has this really good cam lock on it that, that goes on your back bike rack and it locks it in place. So it, there's no way it can kind of pop off. I used to have these that just had a hook on them. And sometimes I would overload them or whatever and they might pop off, but the, with these cammed kind of locks, it locks right onto your bike rack. And I, I really like the Arkell brand. And this one has a has a shoulder strap and you can just pop it right off the bike with one movement and just run right in into work with it. Thank you. And, I think, and it has a it has a sleeve for a laptop. It has a zippered pocket for your cell phone or whatever else keys and all that kind of stuff. It's art. It's made by Arkell. I think it's called A.R.K.E.L. It's a Canadian yeah. company. Yeah. They're really good. Good quality bags. And I put a lot of my stuff in, in individual bags inside, like my, my lunch goes in one, one bag. And so, cause I put it with my clothing and I don't want my lunch to get into my clothing. You know, so I put those in different bags depending. And that makes it a little easier when you're trying to get stuff out. Um, okay, I just need to get this bag out, whatever. So depends on how much space you have where you're going to. But. Great, thanks. What's the best website to access if you're looking for commuter groups? So we have a lot of uh, employees who would like to ride from, you know, Broadwood but all closer to downtown area to north side of Indianapolis above 465. Are there, is there a good website where you could hop on and find out what, you know, if there's a commute group where they can hop in together at different intervals and make it to the same area at the same time? Yeah, so they when, have that. Uh, IndieBikeHub.org. Um, now there are some people who may be starting back up their trains, but we had like six different bike trains from around, around the city that went from different areas and came downtown, um, okay. at the very least for the bike and breakfast. Um, we've suspended the bike and breakfast because of the pandemic, but, um, there are some that might be riding as well, um, anyway, um, and so you can contact, uh, that information is still up there. Um, and you could potentially contact the leaders of each of the bike trains to see if they're still doing that or if they have any, um, any suggestions of other people who might, might want to join. And does that have group ride locations too? So that if you are, you know, maybe a slower cyclist, is there any identification for any of those groups if you're an average rider versus somebody who's more elite and so forth? Um, not really. They, okay. they, I mean, part of the thing of the bike trains is to, to ride as a group. Um, you know, so they try and, try and ride as a group, but yeah, right now we're not, they're not active right now so okay. it would be more of trying to find out what the routes are and if they are still functioning you know if, it, if the leader is still riding and not necessarily leading the ride okay so if i wanted to start a group ride um maybe for girls only guys no offense i get dusted on the hills and i can't keep up so if i wanted to start at a girls only group ride from the north side is that a page that i could start that too mm -hmm. perfect yeah and also what's available at SIVA, SIVA.org. Yeah. You can go on that website and they will have group rides, men, women, and co-ed. Okay. Thank you. The Commuter Connect website also has a place where you can, if you're interested in a bike buddy, people can say like if they're interested in riding to a certain place and it okay. matches people in your area. I don't see a lot of people doing that, so it might not have much info, but okay. it has that option. 
Look at the new prep. She's kind of our research. Great. Thank um, you. Coordinator's research assistant that does all the work with Chris. So, um, okay. Is, well, we're, we're at our hour time. I mean, I don't mind going over if anybody else has any other questions. Um, I can hang around, but uh, anything else anybody wants to discuss? Yeah, you've got something that would be great. Right now, she's been working on. I was just going to comment on like parking. Like, if you work, so I work like in the Salesforce Tower. So, even if sometimes you don't work in that building, go up to like security they can you know, work out that you can like store your bike there um, i found like other people utilize that as a resource so if your building doesn't have you know, like bike parking sometimes you know the other building next door will you know offer you know a car a key car pass so you can like key in so you can um securely store that uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that's really important. I know in my building, I, in the state health department, we lease a building right at Meridian and Washington, an old historic uh, department store building, actually. And our, our we have a bike closet right off the alley with a key card access. I mean, it's really safe. Some people get kind of freaked out about going down the alley, which can alleys can be scary. Um, <laughs> but I've never had an issue, and I just feel lucky to, to have that. A lot of people don't, but... Um, I, I, I parked in, in closets and like coat closets. I put my bike in coat closets before. Um, you know, it's, it just depends, I think, on the, your employer and the building owner on how tolerant they are of building, taking a bike in, inside. Some, some of them are kind of freak out about it because they feel like it's, you're going to have mud, you know, and stuff like that. Sometimes that's an issue, but most of the time it's not. Um, I say but, it's a win-win because parking downtown is only getting more expensive so <laughs> yeah oh yeah yep yeah you can save a lot of money by not paying parking for sure yep all right any other questions or comments okay well good well this was a good discussion thank you all for uh staying with us and um, yeah, look forward to our, our next lunch and learn next month. These have been really good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take care. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Uh -huh.